GM, GM. GM. <laughs> GM. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Howdy. So, uh, so let, let's get this party started. We're going to talk about uh, the Giveth Galaxy in this Twitter space. So that's super exciting. And uh, I'm, I'm going to co-host along with Dr. Suga over here. Uh, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we can start with introductions. I'll introduce myself and then I'll, I'll pass it along. Uh, so I, I'm Griff Green. I am a co-founder of a bunch of orgs, Common Stack. Give give it token engineering commons, general magic, blah blah blah. So many orgs. I'm like a serial nonprofit crypto founder at this point, and uh, I am all about trying to do something better than governments to fund public goods, and uh, that's so that's my mission. I'll pass it over to Suga to introduce herself. Thanks, Griff. Hi, everybody. This is so awesome. So happy to see you all. I am Dr. Suga. I'm with Giveth, uh, formerly of the TEC, and I'm here to talk to you about the Giveth Galaxy. I wrote a piece this summer, a kind of um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Giveth Galaxy. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. But we'll be talking about everything, almost everything that's in that piece. And we're super happy to have you here. So we've got representatives from Common Stack, the Token Engineering Commons, General Magic, Giveth, Praise, and hopefully also the Trusted Seed. We'll see. Um, yeah, so thanks for being here. Griff, um, shall I just get started? Ask yeah. Some questions. Well, I think uh, let's let's pass it to the other guys that, for introducing as well. Uh, maybe maybe we can throw it to Gideon. Sure. Uh, hey everybody, uh, Gideon. I I'm with the Token Engineering Commons, and I'm I'm a steward there. Um, my role is um, is kind of shifting a little bit, but uh, but, but basically what I um, started off doing is working on uh, developing the economic layer of the token engineering commons. And uh, right now we're, we're doing some transitions in the, in the TEC. So I'm, I'm uh, helping to kind of facilitate that process. Uh, do you want me to just pass it on to somebody else, Griff, or do you want to keep, do you want to go back? To oh, you? definitely. No, definitely pass it on. Okay. Lauren, how about you? Yay! Thanks, Gideon. I'm so excited to be here. It's like a call full of some of my favorite people in the space, and we never get to hang out all, all of us together, so I'm really happy to be here. My name is Lauren Luce. I work with Giveth, and I've been with Giveth the past two years. I do many things there. Um, I, I used to lead our comms team, but now I've transitioned to only managing the Twitter with comms, um, but I also lead and manage all the Give Economy products, so things like the Give Farm or Region farms or um, or give backs and and coming soon give power. I'm like managing all those products and and yeah, like Griff, you know. And I think a lot of us here, my my focus on being here in the Web three space is really just how can we use this tech to improve the world? How can we use this tech to change the world for the better? And the the way that I'm kind of approaching that and tackling that with Giveth is by addressing the problem of public goods funding and creation. If we create more public goods and we create better systems to fund the creation of public goods, then we can have more abundance for society and then we can just have like more empowered people and a, just a better world where we can even more successfully take care of the planet and take care of each other. So that's me and that's what I care about. And I will just sling it over to Tam. Hey. And I will just uh, double what you said. It's really fun to be here with some of my favorite people too. That was really, it's really nice to see. I'm in the middle of a move. So my last few days, weeks have been really hard, but as soon as I logged on and saw everyone, I just have the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> so it's really nice to be here. Uh, I'm with Common Stack. Um, I joined the team around two years ago. And at that time we were working with the token engineering community to launch the token engineering commons, which is the first commons based on some research and designs uh, that the common stack has been working on for maybe the two previous years before that. And I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, I'm also a steward in the TEC uh, and I'm going to keep it brief. I, I know we've got a lot of people and a lot of things to cover today. So let me pass it to Christopher. Thanks. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Christopher. I have been involved 
in the TEC and Comstack for quite some time. And uh, gradually, I have been moving my focus more and more towards the, the praise pro uh, project. So now that is my main, almost my only thing where I'm, um, I'm a, a product manager for, for the development of, of praise, or I think we might have just upgraded me to CTO uh, of what we hope to build as a, as a standalone thing that can help uh, all this space to build a, a culture of giving and, and gratitude. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll pass it to Ahmad. Thanks, Christopher. Hey, everyone. It's really nice to be here today. Uh, my name is Ahmad. I'm representing um, General Magic. I handle business development and growth, helping us expand the work that we do in the Giveth Galaxy and supporting impact DAOs through our products, services, and custom solutions. I'll be talking about General Magic a bit later, but um, that's it for me for now. So let me pass it back to Griff. Yeah, and I think uh, maybe we'll throw it to Suga to uh, to uh, pass it around. Okay, great. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions for you all. And I think that our listeners would love to hear more from each of you. So starting out, basically, just with um, how did this journey start uh, for these particular for the org, the, the DAO that you're that you're in, and and why? So how did the journey start and why? Let's, let's, I, I'd like to ask maybe Gideon, could you take that question first and then, you know, pass it on? Sure, Suga. Um, thank you. You know, I was just thinking, though, that since I am relatively new, I wasn't here at the actual founding of the TEC. I'm wondering if Griff or Tam could just jump in and say just a quick few words about that. It's probably more accurate. Sure. Yeah, I, I can. I can uh, jump in. Like the TEC really started uh, out of uh, like some conversations with Michael Sargum from Block Science and the Common Stack, specifically me and Jeff. And uh, we were saying that token engineering is a public good, and it's really critical for anything that giveth or or anybody wants to do in the public good space. That it's uh, that is that token engineering is is accessible to to society and the world. So. Um, in 2019, we had some conversations. At the time, I was leading um, a, a program called the Aragon DAC, DAC, and we were uh, trying to build basically public goods-focused DAOs <clears throat> with bonding curves and creation markets. And uh, and we're like, well, maybe the first one should be token engineering because, hey, we're using token engineering to do public goods, and it's a strategic idea, really. So uh, we... We worked with Zargum to understand who the people were in the token engineering space. We had some fun Miro board sessions to understand what we, how we should get started, and and then we went from there. And uh, you know, amazing token engineering rock stars like like uh, Shebnem and Angela and um, Sherman and Luke from from formerly of Aragon and One Hive. There were so many cool people. Uh, Trent from Ocean and of course Zargum that all kind of came together to say, hey, yeah, let's do this. And then the common stack basically used the TEC as, uh, uh, as an opportunity to build all of the protocols that the common stack wanted to build. And, and with that, maybe I can pass it to Tam to talk about the common stack journey. Sure. I mean, that's a, a lot of that is really uh, exactly what you just mentioned. You know, the start with Jeff and Zargum and yourself. And it, I think I'd say we all agree common stack really sort of came out of Giveth. And um, by the time I joined, we had already had done some conception and were in the phase of trying to build some of these things, like the idea of um, adding a, a tribute to a bonding curve so that every transaction against the bonding curve would create a, a little tribute for the community to then steward to apply to their mission was um, really just a concept when I joined. And then um, the uh, the collaboration with OneHive and Common Swarm to actually build that into a product that now the TEC is using, uh, now the TEC is using and other communities will be able to use as well. So augmented bonding curve, conviction voting, praise, which we, um, you know, two years ago, we're just fiddling around with a bunch of uh, spreadsheets that would invariably break and Griff was the only person who knew how to fix it uh, was a was an idea that we were working with and and you know uh, experimenting with in common stack and then once it moved into the TEC the TEC community really you know a group of you know token engineers and people who are interested in building things really started turning into a, a product 
Uh, but I think the most important thing about Common Stock actually is um, the inspiration. You know, our North Star is the work of a woman uh, political scientist and economist named Eleanor Ostrom. And um, she really pulled the, the curtain back and <laughs> proved that humans can cooperate outside of the market or state management or their duopoly. And her seminal work governing the commons um, earned her the Nobel Prize in economics in 2009. And essentially, if you boil it down to the essence, she won a Nobel Prize for proving that humans can cooperate outside of corporations and governments. And so it's pretty amazing. I think since 2009, a lot of people have sort of started to carry the banner to help um, advocate, research, understand, practice, uh, and um, and tweak this idea of commons. And Common Stack is one of the, uh, maybe the only organization actually in Web3 who are curating the tools for communities to um, deploy and run their own commons inspired economy. Thanks, Tam. You know what? I think that's a good moment to to pass it maybe to Christopher to tell us a little bit about how Praise um, developed then. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, uh, the, the founding story of, of Praise, Griff can tell that better than me, but I, I, I'll give it a try for now. And Griff can, can jump in and correct me if I miss something. That the, the, the idea of Praise was born on... on uh, on, on Burning Man, where it was used as a cultural practice of, of praising uh, praising people for doing good things within uh, within the camp that Griff uh, ran, and and also that they also did a, a, um, the practice of shame, where where they definitely did not point out uh, actual individuals, so they praised people but shamed actions, so shame shame for for misplacing the screwdriver or, or something they should not be left out in the rain i was about to say there's no rain in, in burning man but in the dust so storm so so then it, it, it turned in, into a, a cultural practices with, within uh, giveth uh, like tam described using spreadsheets and etc there was a, a a simple bot developed and um uh, like a year back, it felt like a good idea to try to turn it into something more permanent because we wanted to use it uh, during the commons deployment of uh, the TEC and we felt the need was there for, to, to deploy it to common stack and to give it and, and all, a lot of closely related projects. So I, I was tasked with, with taking this, uh, this uh, um, first bot uh, and the spreadsheet and turn it into uh, into a product uh, or a project. I, I am very much a, a builder, so I, I really enjoyed these uh, these uh, things. And and now uh, we have a, a a working version out. It's a, it's a self-hosted open source system that anyone can use if they want to to build a, a culture of of giving and gratitude in their community. You know, rewarding and recognizing members' contributions. Uh, we believe that that is a super, super powerful tool that, that, that it should be like really a foundational tool when building a community to be able to use, uh, to, to be able to, to use gratitude as a tool. Um, and um, yeah, it's a self-hosted open source tool. It's available uh, now and, and we have implemented it in, in a number of communities outside of uh, the giveth uh, galaxy uh, as well gnosis uh, might be one of the more prominent and uh, um, maybe that's enough about praise for now so what you, are you saying Christopher. yeah thank you so just to yeah um just to be able to sling that over to giveth i want to add so basically praise you're saying we you have this tool where you can quantify what typically is considered only qualifiable information. So everybody's contribution suddenly can be converted into a number and assessed and counted and sort of given back to them in whatever form the, the organization um, chooses, which is just sort of signature of all of the organizations in the Giveth Galaxy that it's, once again, just to come back to this culture of giving and gratitude. So with that, yeah. let's let's pass it over to Lauren to tell us, if you can, about the the journey, the start, let's say, of Giveth, what it came out of, how it developed, where it came from. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's funny to, to tell the story when Griff is right here, because he was there at the very beginning. I've been with Giveth for the past <laughs> two years, but 
Giveth has been around since 2016 and actually really got its start out of the DAO. So Griff was the community manager from the DAO. Oh, it's so funny to just tell his story. He was the community manager from the DAO. And then after the DAO sort of crumbled and broke down, um, white hat hackers from the DAO kind of decided to start Giveth um, with really this idea in mind that like we can kind of change the world by empowering nonprofits to become DAOs of their own. So this is really like the long-term, long-term vision of Giveth. Um, but the, like the, the first step, the first step in like getting public goods projects to become DAOs with regenerative microeconomies is being able to meet nonprofits where they're at. It's being able to bring nonprofits into the Web3 space in a way that's kind of like easy and easy for them to understand. Um, and so we started out with a donation platform. So Giveth.io is a donation platform. Um, before that, we had a different donation platform um, called Giveth Trace, but it's a place where nonprofits can start raising funds for their projects so they can get funding to create public goods. And what we want to do over time is teach nonprofits like how to get more integrated into the Web3 space so that they can start using like Web3 tooling to make better systems to get funding that's not just relying on donations and sacrifice. So the like give us started with this like huge lofty long-term vision and then and then to like get there it's it's really working on these bite-sized pieces like first donation platform bringing nonprofits into this space and then what happened with give us which i think is really interesting and really relevant to this call is like Give us sort of started branching out in many different directions, like the common stack spun out of Give us so that they could work on the applied research side of like of of this mission. And then the TC kind of spun out of the common stack and then general magic spun out and and um, and praise spun out. And so it's just really, really cool, like the the trajectory. And and I jumped in somewhere like halfway through it all. And I'm, I'm kind of like but I'm here seeing it till the end. So you yeah. bring so much energy too. it's amazing. Thank you. So, yeah, well, okay, so let's bring General Magic into the equation here. It sounds like there have been so many wonderful ideas, developments, creations, different organizations, and that's a lot of work <laughs> to do all on your own. So we have General Magic, I think, who sort of takes over some of that. Am I not uh, mistaken, Ahmad? Tell us about General Magic the journey, the start of your journey. Yeah, let me actually pass it on to Marco since he was uh, one of the co-founders <laughs> actually that uh, started the whole journey. Marco, awesome. Yeah, thanks Ahmad, thanks Ahmad. Oh, it's a little bit weird. Uh, I have to do this on my phone. So, um, but anyway, uh, hi everybody. My name is Marco. I'm I'm sort of like executive steward of General Magic right now. I'm design lead as well. Um, how it all started? Well, yeah, you know, Lauren, you mentioned like GM spun out of Give It Gal actually out of Give It, but it was like two years ago or even more when um, you know we we were basically already working and supporting these amazing projects that. Uh, are on you know that we heard about uh, during this call and so like kind of like spontaneously uh you know griff and i were speaking about it and said like hey what how about like we form a a team a squad of people like you know you know experts in the web3 space and start you know make it kind of like official uh, to start supporting you know continue supporting these projects but also like expand and try to support more impact DAOs and then by that time you know the impact DAOs term wasn't coined yet i think uh but like you know public goods projects in general and so we said yeah okay cool so like you know we were just a couple of people uh, i think uh, three four of us uh and then like you know grew really really fast <laughs> uh i you know i blame grief for that <laughs> uh but yeah but it, it, it's okay uh, you know we we continue to support the give it project um tc dap node right id you know we were really working really hard uh on 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 all these projects and then trying to expand them further and more Today we are well, I guess uh, over forty people or somewhere around that, and we're still growing. Uh, and we're kind of like you know offering solution services to to impact DAOs and then public goods projects, but we're also supporting and building our own products. And well, we heard mentioned uh, one of them is the praise. Uh, and we also, uh, you know, build our own swag shop that we're trying to customize now for, you know, Web3 specific use cases. 
um and and yeah and you know in general trying to to build the products for for the for, for the projects who are building the infrastructure that supports these impact dollars and public goods right and so like you know all these projects normally have less resources uh to be able to move faster and create you know that that very needed infrastructure uh for uh you know to to accomplish their mission and so like you know we try to jump in there and and help them speed up that process and so it's yeah, yeah that's in general what we do and like how we started and what we do and where we're going uh well you know we're trying to support even more projects as possible and yeah if you know someone that is like that it fits this category send them our way thanks marco so, um so would you say that well how in that case, how would you, like, are you impact, impact DAO for good project specific in terms of your, your clients? Yeah, I, I think like that was our differentiator. So like, we're not going to build a new DeFi casino or something like that. It's just boring. <clears throat> I mean, we might use it or, or you know, uh, but like, we're not going to build that stuff. Uh, you want to focus on something that is, uh, you know, that is good for that is a public good or it has like that that impact DAO tag uh across of their you know uh, their their product or services so so yeah we we really want to focus on on you know these areas right great so i want to i want to ask everybody something similar i know you just talked about the origins of the organization and you gave really wonderful detailed stories so in a nutshell in fact, you could even you could even read this from your website, but I want to just hear the mission at this point. So we talked about origin stories and without being too redundant there because they're they're vaguely similar questions, but what is the mission? So, Tam, what is the mission of Common Stack? I mean, so I I feel like we could say in three words, it's we launch commons. And the mission is to continue to research, build and curate tools that allow communities that want to, you know, launch common inspired economies in order to collectively steward whatever resource or mission they have in mind uh, so that they can accomplish their mission. A little bit like uh, what Marco said, but from a different perspective of having a, you know, an entire design pattern that a organization can, or a community can use to launch their own commons. It's like we are helping other people help find their own missions or achieve their own missions. Um, you know, we can imagine a world where public goods are managed and supported by multiple different con con commons economies. And um, yeah, that would, it would be an, an amazing reality. Uh, it'd be amazing to realize that. Thank you. And I think that vaguely that mission, well, it obviously resonates or echoes, we might even say reverberates with the giveth mission. Uh, Lauren, could you provide us with that in a nutshell, the giveth mission? Yeah, so the Giveth mission, as written on our website, is uh, to build a culture of giving that rewards and empowers those who give. So when I shorten it, it's usually like Giveth's mission is to reward and empower those who give, where, like, as I mentioned kind of earlier, like the, the focus is really um, public goods projects and people who are kind of adding value to the collective. These are the givers of society. So we want to empower them to do more of that and reward them for doing that. So it's like everybody who's adding value to the collective actually is like uplifted for doing so and is able to sustain themselves and is able to continue growing so that we can create like a more harmonious ecosystem. And we're really aligned with the common stack there because like our kind of path to get there is by by turning nonprofits into commons. And so it's like we really want to use like the tools from the common stack to really realize that end goal. Right, right, exactly. So the, the projects of Giveth, Giveth itself is supporting them. So creating these um, this space for donors, for givers to, to benefit, but also, of course, these projects and to lift them up and bring them into the Web3 space and to grow and develop and, and to be nurtured. Um, let's pass it on to, I, I guess, I would say, Gideon, if you could, I mean, we don't want Griff to answer every question, but let's try this out. <laughs> so if you could answer this one, and I think you probably can. The TEC um, it can sometimes, the, so the mission of the TEC can, can be a bit unclear to the average 
uh, person. So how can we understand the, the mission of the TEC? I know we've talked about it coming out of it's sort of the first commons that was launched by the commons tech, but what does that mean? What does a token engineering commons actually mean? Sure. Um, yeah. So, so you know, the official mission is is somewhat long, but the the opening statement is kind of cool. It's our goal is to become a shelling point for the token engineering community. So it's kind of the natural place where people kind of are drawn to around this question of token engineering. What what I like is the vision, which is uh, enable the creation of ethical, safe, resilient, and diverse economic systems to benefit societies around the world. That's actually why I came here. I mean, I, uh, maybe another way of thinking about it is that I, we've got these really complex blockchain systems that are being developed. And, um, you know, how do we know if we're in a community, whether it's a physical community or a, a community in cyberspace, how do we know that these systems are actually safe? And how do we know that they're going to do what they tell us they're going to do? And how do we know that they're going to reflect the values of this community that, that we're living in that, that's actually adopting these tools? And so, you know, that I think is the promise of the token engineering commons is that we're working to build this field of token engineering as a way to ensure that these kinds of economies, the economies of the future can actually thrive. That's the, that's the way I see it at least. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Okay, so let's also pass this on to Praise. Christopher, tell us about your mission. What is Praise missioning? Yeah, uh, it, it's quite clear actually. It, it's, it, it's, uh, it's based on this uh, idea that, uh, or the, this, knowledge that moving over to a digital space, we sort of lost the, the, the power of, of praising. We, we forgot that part. It's difficult to bring that in. You know, the praising is, is super important when building uh, communities and in close relationships with, within your family, etc. You know, praise it reinforces positive feelings. It leads to happiness. It increases cooperation and it creates stronger sense of community, etc., etc. And uh, the mission of praise is to bring this uh, warm power of praise in, into the digital space. That, that is our, our core mission. And, and to use, uh, so, so that communities can use praise as sort of a foundational tool uh, to build a strong and, and vibrant uh, communities. We, we believe that it's uh, super important to be able to use praise. Um, so that's a short answer. Sounds good, thank you, perfect. Let's... Um... Let's move on to Griff. We'd like to hear from you. So tell us how these orgs all relate. We've been hearing a bit about that, but you can dive in for us. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty funny. It's like basically all of them directly or indirectly spun out of giveth uh, from, a, from a need, <clears throat> from a general need. So like uh, common stack, giveth's goal has always been to build DAOs uh, for uh, for nonprofits. And, but it, you know, we're giveth's more focused at um, meeting the nonprofits where they where they're at. So, uh, Common Stack kind of spun out of Give It to focus on that mission of how do we develop public goods focused DAOs and uh, developed a, pa a design pattern to achieve that. And now is integrating that. And uh, and really the goal with Common Stack is is the startup side of it. You know, like yes, uh, Gitcoin can launch a token and has a bunch of adoption, but how can a small nonprofit launch a token? And that's where bonding curves come in. And, and these things are kind of complicated. So Common Stack is really focusing on that side of things. Um, and then uh, when uh, Dapnode was launching their economy and Giveth was launching their economy, and, and uh, you know, both teams really needed like an injection of dev support. So uh, General Magic came in as kind of like a, a rotating dev team. You know, they didn't uh, in the public good space. We don't always have the funding to just maintain a bunch of devs doing random stuff uh, when we don't really need them full on for our mission. You know, so it's really nice to be able to contract to uh, aligned dev uh, teams that are focused on building the same stuff. So that's where General Magic really comes in is is to kind of fill the gaps of hu the human resources side. Um, when all of a sudden you have a big project that you want to launch. And uh, the token engineering commons, of course, uh, came out of the common stack to, uh, and, and really was launched alongside with the common stack in some ways to, uh, to really build on this, like building an ethical um, and, and like accessible framework for token engineering, um, which is really important for us. You know, uh, 
if you think about what governments and uh, nonprofits build, to, especially governments, what they build today, they build public infrastructure. And if you want to build a bridge, you need you need to do some engineering, you know. Otherwise, that things will, that thing will collapse. And uh, in the economic side, we're building public infrastructure uh, as in the crypto space, and we but we don't do the real token engineer. We don't give token engineering the credit that it that it deserves, and and really the emphasis of of designing these things so that the they will not collapse. And we've seen this time and time again in the crypto space. That we need to start taking this seriously. Uh, Luna being the most recent example, but there's so many um, from phase failed launch, uh, raising a billion dollars, and then the whole their stablecoin crashing almost at launch, and uh, and and there's just so many examples that I could bring up where if there was some understand a basic understanding in the community of token engineering uh, that it would be prevented. And so in, in the public good space, that's really important. And then of course praise is so critical. Uh, praise, uh, one, you know, praise really started out of Burning Man, but even before Burning Man in Giveth, there was a reward system DAO kind of. It was called Reward DAO. And it was about uh, how do we, and, and really the goal was how do we take this qualitative value that people in the nonprofit space are contributing and turn it into something quantitative so we can reward them for it. And and so praise emerged out of this need for a qualitative focused reward system that the TEC needs, Common Stack needs, Giveth needs, General Magic needs, everybody needs. Uh, so uh, really, this is how all these pieces pe come together. And I want to also give a shout out to Trusted Seed. I see I see um, some of the Trusted Seed in there. Oh, actually, Max is there. I don't know if Max can join, but um, he uh, the Trusted Seed is also really important because when we're launching these um, uh, public goods focused economies, we really need them to uh, be started with aligned individuals, not people who want to extract value from these systems, but people who actually care about the value that's being created. And uh, that's what the trusted seed allows us to do. It allows us to filter out all the all the you know um, extraction focused, like like the airdrop seekers and the people who are just in this space to make money and don't really care about the larger missions that each project is supporting. They're just trying to advance their own stuff. Like that's okay, but it's a huge problem if you're trying to start a public goods focused economy. So the trusted seed is there to help protect us. And ensure and just do a little research. You know, it's not KYC. It's more like, it, you know, it, but it's similar in some ways of just knowing who this anonymous person is. We don't need their legal identity, but we need to know that they actually care about the, the things that they're participating in. And they're not just trying to dump the token. So all these pieces work together and they all are working towards building the future that that really giveth especially is trying to build the platform to do. I'll pass it back to you. Thanks, Griff. Um, maybe if that if it's cool with you and with Max, we can hear hear it from the horse's mouth, as it were, if uh if that's okay. What do you think about that? Yeah, but is Max Max isn't a speaker yet. He's gotta he's gotta yeah. come up. I just <laughs> I invited him to speak. Let's see if he's up for that. Nah, no, he's okay. yeah, but he's not he's not up here yet. So I think okay. I think we should when he gets here, we'll get him in. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, great. Well, um, in that case, let's move on to another question um, related to some of what Greg was just saying about challenges. What are the main challenges you're identifying in regards to achieving your mission? Uh, let's pass that to General Magic, Marco or Ahmad. What are some of your challenges? Yeah, I think uh, one of the challenges with the Giveth Galaxy is that we have so many different organizations. Um, it's amazing that we're casting such a wide net, but we run the risk of being spread too thin. So I think we constantly need to look for ways to um, collectively work together. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's about uh, figuring out, you know, do we scale horizontally or vertically and then figuring out, like, what is the best approach that all of us can work together? Interesting. Okay, how to scale. Thank you for that concise response. Uh, let's pass it over to Lauren. Give it. Can you tell us about some challenges and how you embrace them? Yeah, you know, 
Incidentally, or semi-ironically, one of the biggest challenges that we're experiencing right now at Giveth is like the challenge of funding public goods. Like Giveth itself is a funding, is, is a public good. Like we're a completely free zero fee donation platform. And like until the launch of our economy, we were funded exclusively by, no, by donations. And then we were funded also by issuance by having our token. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a struggle just to, to like create sustaining, sustainable funding systems for um, public goods projects, especially crypto public goods projects in a bear market. So it's kind of like one challenge that we're running into. So the way that we're embracing it is just coming up with like new innovative ways to try to get like to try to incentivize more donations or get people wanting to come in and support Giveth more um, by, by giving them some certain rewards. Like we, we launched the NICE token, which is a rewards token token um for people who donate directly to the giveth project and um and you, if you get the, if you donate um like if you donate die x die um or um die or x die die or x die or usdc i think to the giveth project you get nice token and one-to-one ratio and then you can buy swag with it so it's like a way of kind of rewarding our donors with uh something in return with with swag so that we can kind of like get more funds into giveth and but like you know this is kind of just more motivation for us on our mission um, to eventually turn like turn nonprofits into into DAOs and have people like really understand how to participate in DAOs and want to participate in DAOs and then like kind of bringing bringing people into this like ecosystem around like decentralized governance over or over funding public goods because that in itself will create more like economic return and more economic value to the public goods project. So like one so anyway Long story short, the, the biggest challenge that we're facing is like by being a public goods project, we still kind of rely on donations and rely on the generosity of other people to, to keep moving forward on our mission. Um, and the way that we're tackling it is like by coming up with like new innovative ways to bring more revenue into, into Giveth that isn't just like creating scarcity, which is what most business models do. Right. I love that, Lauren. So there's always like a rewards mechanism built in. Um, so tell us also then about the TEC uh, in terms of challenges, because this sounds like it could be related. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I see two big challenges. I mean, not just for the TEC, but just for this space in general. Like the first one, just to echo what Lauren is saying is, you know, how do we make this sustainable? So, you know, these are new economic models and um, we're asking people to kind of stretch their understanding of how they think about money, right? Like, is this is this like something that they're funding, expecting a return, expecting the price to go up? Or is this something that they're doing purely out of a desire to make an impact on the world? And so we're trying to say both, you know, it's both and. And but getting those models right is is complex. And then the second thing is, um, I think that we're kind of going against some like pretty harsh headwinds when it comes to people's understanding of the blockchain space in general. Like there's so much bad news. We have such a bad name because of all this crypto stuff that's happening. Um, that's the vast majority of what the world hears uh, and feels when they think about crypto. And so I think one of the big challenges that we face is to start to tell the other story, right? To tell the story about how this stuff, how this new technology stack can actually change the world and really make it a better place. Um, you know, decentralize power uh, and create much greater opportunity for, for people around the world um, and, and, and help basically restore the planet. So those are the stories I think we need to start telling and um, so that we can get out of this kind of this negative uh, impression that so many people have about the crypto space. That's interesting. So it's still about the, the message, sharing the message, getting it out there. And how about uh, common stat, Tam? Hey, Challenges. Yeah. I mean, so I think, you know, at a operational level, I think one of our biggest challenges is it's really hard for us to say what we do like a, a huge, you know, a, a holistic view of the design pattern, how the modules fit together. You know, we're, we're at a place today where we're ready to work with new communities. And so we've been talking with some communities. And I think that um, one of our challenges is getting better at, you know, being able to communicate this. But launching an economy is not simple. And the design patterns take time. Um, uh, to deploy and you know the way we do it collaborative economics uh, is designed specifically to make sure that people in the 
in the community have voice are not only um, voting for decisions to, to that be made that'll govern them, but also have the possibility of making their own suggestions to be voted on. So they're very, very involved in the entire process. So it's a it's kind of a niche, you know, a commons isn't for every community. Uh, you know, some some of the the governing um, governing commons principles are very easy for most organizations to say yes to, clear boundaries, graduated sanctions, but then others. They're just so different from how we're familiar with operating in organizations today. It's it's almost an, an it's an alternative to hierarchy, and it's almost the polar opposite of what we're used to, which is really command and control in our schools, in our uh, in our industries, in our corporations. And so there's things like you know collective choice arrangements and co congruence between rules um, that are made and the local conditions. People deciding how to um, like hands-on decision making of how to uh, create and modify the rules that they're being governed under. So I, I think, you know, the, the two things is like, it's very difficult for us to explain what it is that, that this, this is, this commons, but then it's also a product that's not for everyone. So it's really matching with the right communities that are aligned with the philosophy of commons. That's amazing. Yeah, this, it sounds like we have some, we have some sharing to do some communication works in part. And here, when you're talking at the end about, different from what we're used to, different the usual operating mode of command and control. I want to pass it now to Christopher and Praise um, and the challenges that Praise faces and how you're looking to overcome them. I was wondering if that might be part of the challenge in Praise. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so so for Praise differs a little bit from, from the other projects in this call since Praise is a, is a, a system primarily and, and, and not primarily a, a community. But we still we still run the have the same same challenges when it comes to to funding, uh, of course, because we don't want to build praise into a, a classical web to startup or, or like before funding comes another challenge is like how the main challenge is how do we bring praise to as many communities as possible. And uh, eventually we want to make this transition of, of praise into uh, a network uh, or an, an economy or even an ecology. We see praise as being su such a foundational thing needed for all communities. So we want the, the praise data to be out there and accessible and, and be used by all communities in, in this space. And how, how do we make the transition from where we are at today and, until this situation where praise is a vibrant network and, and the praise data is used by everyone to gain community insight, to do rewards, to, to generate reputation, etc. And while all, all the while funding ourselves along the way, uh, making it really easy for, for new communities to, to get started. The self-hosted solution that we have been doing now takes a little bit of time to set up. So we really want to make it super simple to, for, for new communities to get online. And the, the most convenient way of uh, offering that is to build a centralized Web2 actor where you have like one button deployments, etc. Uh, doing it as a network uh, is always more um challenging so so we have a, a bunch of uh, challenges or like trade-offs of becoming this uh, centralized actor or becoming more of a network and um, uh, fun challenges to my mind really fun building challenges ahead of us yeah there we go sorry about that yeah thank you christopher so we we see some overlapping issues in the challenges i want to pass a question or pose a question rather to griff um, then regarding the collective future of these different organizations, how, what do you envision the collective future will look like and which new directions or new goals would you like to pursue in this collective venture? I mean, you know, the, the collective future on my side or, or what I feel like the Giveth Galaxy is really pushing towards is a world where there is almost a similar to a free market of for public goods and services. Instead of having a government that has monopoly control over any public goods vertical that they choose to engage in, and I and and then which the ones they don't, the only other option is nonprofits. Instead of instead of 
that world, <laughs> the world we have today, uh, we actually have uh, something where someone can start up a public goods um, organization and have a similar kind of funding strategy as any other startup. Uh, instead of it being a nonprofit where they have to beg for funding and, you know, uh, just basically be at the total behest of the capital uh, that gives them money to do stuff, that, that they have a clear path where they can go to give it. They can start they can start raising some funds in crypto and build a community or or maybe eventually they can even just start launching, start by launching their their own economy, similar to how someone would start an LLC. Where it's just like, yep, we're we're starting this uh, this economy, uh, you know, and we're going to launch a token, and we're going to sell, we're going to launch a bonding curve, and it'll be they follow a traditional pattern that is, uh, you know, uh, on on the giveth marketplace actually, or on the giveth exchange, you could say, uh, and and then anyone could start supporting them. Uh, maybe maybe they have to be a member of the trusted seed. Uh, maybe and, and maybe this community would distribute free uh, initial shares based off of praise. And of course, the the um, token engineering would have been validated by the token engineering commons community. And and like just uh, everyone, uh, you know, all of these orgs really help to make this future where we don't need governments anymore because we can do it ourselves. And, and the people who are providing public goods are actually rewarded for doing so. And that's the key is if we can figure out how to make sure that the people who are providing value in the public space, public good space are adequately rewarded for the value they produce, then we really don't need governments anymore. So, <laughs> sorry. So the crypto anarchist comes out of me on, on this vision pretty hard, but, uh, but that's really the, the world that we're trying to go to. And as far as other directions that we have to go, I mean, you know, I would say in general, the gift galaxy has been pretty, uh, head in the sand around the legal side of things. And I think that's fine for the near future because funding is really hard and, uh, you know, lawyers are very expensive. But uh, that's, of course, something that we're going to need to understand the risks around uh, starting these economies and how to do them in, in, this, in the safest way possible. And I also think that there's a, a lot to be said about... Uh, how do we involve experts? And I feel like praise is especially good at measuring labor uh, contributions. But how do we how do we get outside of um, you know the small group that's that's like active in the day to day and really build the network so that people can passively engage? Um, I really like this project that General Magic is working on with uh, some people in formerly of Colony. Uh, around budget box and making just like really easy ways to signal around voting. You know, voting is such a, a such a horrible process today. It's the user experience around voting is so bad uh, when really voting should be signal aggregation. And I think if we are to succeed at achieving this mission, uh, we really need to make sure that it's easy for people to signal their preference without having to be so active in the day to day. So we just need better tools so that people can say, I like this, I like that, without it being like having to show up and read a bunch of forum posts and then vote on some tool that they barely know how to use. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Griff. That's great. You know, if you mentioned um, a couple of things regarding like the legality and the importance of decentralization, I wonder if that's not a good moment. It looks like Max can maybe speak. Is that, am I correct on that? Maybe you want to tell us a little bit about the trusted seed then in that light. Um, probably both a little bit just about what it is and um, any challenges you're facing. Okay, uh, sure. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yeah, sounds good, Max. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, Trusted Seed uh, emerged uh, through the hatch of the token engineering commons where there was a need for the people uh, who you might trust that they won't, uh, you know, dump the token and would be good stewards for the uh, young community. So that's exactly what we're trying to build, like a community of uh, stewards and angels for uh, DAOs, uh, specifically like regenerative finance DAOs or 
any like uh, ecological social activities and so on but uh, as a part of the uh, give it galaxy we provide uh, some bunch of services including uh, this uh, reputation uh, support for our members uh, that affects uh, the access to the other hash investments or can be used for the recruiting purposes and uh, also currently we're uh, running a an on conference yesterday was our opening day but now we'll have a month of events where our members come coming from different uh, commons and ecosystems bringing uh, the best uh, or most useful tools uh, they have or they practice to to show to show them and disseminate so yeah, if you'd be curious, just uh, go to the wiki of uh, Trusted Seed website and uh, join. It's uh, free for people. And uh, regarding the challenges, uh, it's uh, knowing what, uh, like, how to develop the skill set and what skill set of the future we need, and uh, how to build belonging for uh, uh, pretty different people, you know, and build the uh, narratives that would support uh, the union, like uh, unification and so on. So this is uh, a bit from our side. Thank you. Thank you, Max. This is also encouraging this wonderful, encouraging community with this for good decentralized focus. Before we open this up to Q&As, I just want to mention that directly after this call, um, on the Giveth Discord, we have a general orientation in AMA. So anybody who wants to go and learn more, I think about anybody in the Giveth Galaxy, please join us directly after this uh, Twitter space. With that said, we have a few minutes, and I would love to hear some questions. Well, I think we could all share in some questions. Um, maybe we can yeah i'll open the floor up for that yeah if you have any questions just uh request to speak and we will bring you in and that doesn't preclude like speakers please speakers you also yeah need to ask questions well, I, of course. I think i think stefan has a question hey how's it going um okay my question is so something that we often see um, has a terminology that you've mentioned a few times in the space, and I see it often um, in TAC and Giveth and CommonStack. And I'm just wondering if um, you know someone can say it in their words what it means. But the whole bonding curve—it's a complex topic. But if somebody can explain it in their most simple way they can, um, and how that's important in, in the process. Uh, I think that would like really help clarify for things for someone like me who's not a token engineering expert or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's my question. What is the bonding curve? I can, I can take a stab at that. Um, so a bonding curve is basically a solution for low liquidity markets. So if a DAO launches a new token, um, they, they want to be able to, people want to be able to trade that token on the market. Um, but normally tokens don't have liquidity until it's more, more well established and people are providing liquidity or there's liquidity on centralized exchanges. So bonding curves really solve that problem. And the way that a bonding curve works basically is that there's a bunch of collateral of like some token. In the case of the token engineering commons, we had XDAI uh, or wrapped XDAI. So there's like some wrapped XDAI that's like held somewhere. And then anybody who wants to mint a TEC token can send wrapped XDAI to the curve and um, get a TEC token. And if they wanted to burn a TEC token, they could send the TEC token to the curve and get XDAI. So there's basically, it's like a, a smart contract that's controlling token mints and burns so that there's all, always liquidity for a budding token economy. What did you think? Did I do good? Does anyone have anything that they, any way to describe bonding curves better? I have a different question. I see we only have three minutes left, but uh, I'm going to throw it out. Uh, so there's uh, so many different solutions for reputation in Web3 now. I'm, there's a lot of, um, you know, 
interesting ways that people are tackling it um, and more solutions coming into the space every day. So I'd like to ask Christopher, what differentiates praise today and what's the big vision for the future that will really make it different than other, uh, other solutions? Sorry, sorry, than the other rewards uh, solutions. Uh, more about reputation than rewards. Reputation. Yeah, so, so, so the, the main difference between praise and, and many other systems is that praise captures this qualitative subjective data of the, the human to human uh, perception of what I perceive uh, to be someone else's contribution. Um, many other reputation systems, they rely solely on on-chain on data which is a really poor quality signal, looking at someone's transaction history and, and you know, seeing that this and that person had this and that uh, token in their wallet and at this and that uh, time, uh, time uh, does not really tell the full story if, if that person is a valuable contributor to your community. And most reputation uh, systems actually look at mostly at on-chain data. Uh, Praise generates a, a data set where, where the... the reputation it's in clear text who did what when and what impact did it have in clear text as fully described by, by a human to, to another human so it's the the data produces a, it's a much much richer data set which allow us to do uh, analysis and community insight and reputation regeneration uh, at a totally different level thanks everybody see you see you shortly see you out in the galaxy <laughs>